So we created our app, updated it so that it used Google login. And so if you run GoApp deploy or this thing, it will deploy the latest version. And what's interesting is because the Google login's unified across uh, sort of all of their services, it's also unified when you use their login to your service. So I don't even get a login page. It just all automatically shows the account that I was logged in as. Um, because the cookie used for Gmail is the same cookie used for this guy, uh, and et cetera, um, all the way through. And so it's all shared. Everything just works. Um, so yeah, you shouldn't even see the login. Now if I log out here, it actually logs me out of Google for everything. So I don't really want to do that, but uh, it would work. It would log me out. So in general, if we, if we do this approach to login, we probably don't even need a sign up button. Okay. So that's really cool. That means that the first time users come to your site, you may not even need to create a, a like, they don't even have to sign up. They, they can be signed up automatically by just being logged into Google. Um, okay. So that's how we do it. We just add uh, the login thing here. And that's how we do it. Um, so we had a question about custom domains, and I thought I'd do that before I move on to the next thing. Uh, it's really easy to, to do a custom domain. You have two options. You can do it through Google, uh, and that's under settings, so compute app engine settings. You can add a custom domain here. So you could buy a domain name from them uh, and then set it up here. You'll list all the ones you have access to. Uh, and suppose I want to add, uh, do, I, so I own docu.net, and I want to add a custom domain. I want to map my, so instead of going to whatever.appspot.com, I can go to whatever.doxy.net. Okay, so if you were actually going to run a real application, you probably wouldn't use an AppSpot domain. You'd use your own custom domain. So let's, let's see how you do that. It's actually really easy. Uh, I'll call this bootcamp-example. Uh, where are you at in the, in the uh, uh, Compute app engine settings. This list is populated by verified domains. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Compute app engine settings, and then custom domains is at the top. And you can verify a domain, and what it'll do is it'll ask you to add a little uh, text field or something to your domain. Once you've verified it, it will show up in this list. And then you can select, so I'm going to add this subdomain underneath docs.net. Uh, and I want this to go to my app. So the way I do that is I click add. Um, and it doesn't seem to tell you anything, but it's been added. And then I need to go to my domain name provider. So I, I, I told you I was using Cloudflare for this. Uh, and then I log in here. And then I go to my doxy.net and DNS. And this would be pretty much the same for all of them. Um, and so basically there's, we only, there are other types of records, but we tend to only work with, with two of them. And those are A and C name. And so an A record points to an IP address. And C name points to another domain. So uh, I'm going to add bootcamp example here as a C name. And it tells you to do this in the instructions there. And then add record. Um, and so now it says bootcamp example is an alias. Oh, I put the wrong thing, sorry. This is not. It's supposed to be uh, this, ghs.googlehosted.com. Map 
so in here, so now I have my custom domain. But this is going to App Spot now. Okay? So it's actually really easy to create your own custom domain. Uh, the certificates get a little more uh, complicated. So you can do SSL, meaning HTTPS, colon slash slash whatever dot app spot dot com. You get that for free. If you want to do a custom domain, it's not quite so simple. Um, I think there's a $40 a month fee. And the reason for that is you have to have your own IP address and it's, it's complicated. Uh, as an alternative, you can use Cloudflare to do it. Whoops. Oh, man. And so instead of that, you can turn this on. What that does is make all traffic go through Cloudflare and then go to its final destination. It will do the uh, SSL stuff for you for free. So that's another option. What if you don't need this? Then just don't, you don't have to use it. Or you want your domain name? Yeah, that's what I have now. This is insecure. And that's free? Yeah. Okay. So the charge is only for the secure yeah. uh, connection? And what I'm saying is uh, you can bypass the charge if you use Cloudflare. Yeah. Because they'll do it for free. But Google's going to charge you for it. But Google will do it for free if it's not a secure connection. If it's not secure. Or if you just use AppSpot.com, yeah, then you can do that one. If I want to redirect my, my domain name without a secure connection, that's free. That's free. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't have to pay anything to do this. I had to buy the domain name. That was it. OK. Any questions about that? Yeah. That was just a sidebar for custom domains. So anyway, it's pretty easy to add one. Um, unfortunately, that's the kind of thing you basically do once, and so you never remember how to do it. Because how often do you add a new domain? What's the difference between the A record and C name? What, what are those? Yeah, so A means it maps to an IP address. Okay. So the whatever dot whatever dot whatever dot numbers. C name means another domain. It's okay. like an alias. Okay. Which is way for your name. Yeah, because I wanted to go from doxy.net to at spot, basically. Um, just so I can have a different URL in the top. But if I did an IP address, it would go to and so normally I have them mapped to IP addresses. IP addresses are machine IP addresses to DigitalOcean. But for app, for app Engine, you want to use a C name because you don't have an IP address. You have a dot app spot dot com. Um, okay. So I, I, this next thing is called session redux. I want to go back to the session because Todd discovered something which is super important that I wasn't doing before. Okay, so in general, if, if, uh, if we're doing this user stuff, we don't have to use session anymore. If all we were storing in session was whether or not a user's logged in or not, if we use Google Login, we don't need sessions because they do it for us. We can get it right here. So we can get rid of the session stuff and don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, but if you still need sessions, uh, it's really important that we, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, make a new folder here called Session Redux. And what I'm going to do is just copy these guys into there. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of, okay, it's not in there, no login. And Now I've just made a blank page, not doing anything. Um, so the bit that Todd discovered, which is super important, is that in the Gorilla Sessions documentation, you have to do this queer context thing. Otherwise, your program leaks memory. So a memory leak is a part of your program that is allocating memory, but never releasing it. And so over time, your leaking memory. You're getting more and more and more and more memory. So if you imagine in your basement there's a leak, it might be a small leak, but for a long enough time, and your basement's full of water. Right? And then in this sense, your crash would be your basement's completely flooded, 
your crash in your program is it literally crashes because you ran out of memory. So memory leak is a very common uh, bug in the program. And they have this note that you have to do this, otherwise your memory leak. What that means is whatever you do when you get the session with Gorilla, that creates something that's never released. And so we have to manually release it. And that's what the clear handler is doing. Uh, and so that's like a subtle thing that was said in docs. And so Todd was completely right to add it. And so, but the issue is we don't have a listen and serve inside of that engine. So we can't do it this way. Oh, wow. So how do we do that? Um, we have to create our own serve box, right? Add the routes this way. And then call it this way. Okay. The idea here is sorry, that should be serve serve notes. Should it be is 14 HTTP Hamilton or serve months Hamilton? I think this is right. Can I use clear handle? But 14 is just the handle because you're passing it the whole handle object. You're right. Um, and so instead of doing listen serve, we do hp.handle all of the URLs, every URL that code is going to receive. If you use clear handler, it's going to go to the serve box. So it'll go, it'll go for slash, it'll go to this guy, he'll clear out the handler when he needs to, and then call this. This guy then looks at the routes, he sees slash, and he goes to index. Okay, so we sort of have to do two serve boxes with this. Because we don't have a listen serve, so we have to do a listen. Everybody follow it? Yeah. <coughs> So that's something to keep in mind, uh, is that if you want to use your own sessions, you're going to need to do it this way, just because we have to do this <coughs> after every request, otherwise it might leak memory. I don't know uh, how much memory it leaks. I, I don't know all the technical details. I just know that, that they say that could be an issue. So we should do what the docs say to do. Okay. But luckily, we often don't have to do that. We can just avoid the sessions entirely by using Google Lives. But sometimes it's not an option. Uh, while we're in here, looking at this, I just want to mention that there are other ways to um, to do route, right? So that's the default serve mux, but since we're in here, I'll show you a different router. We don't have to use this one, but I just want to show you that there's flexibility in how you build your app. You know? mm -hmm. So let's use this one instead. It's called HTTP router. And I kind of like this one more. Um, so we import it. And so instead of serve mux, and I'm going to rename it router, um, we'll say HTTP router.new. And router is very similar, except it has these pre-canned, uh, these matched methods in HTTP. So this is a get request. Um, but there's also others. So if we look in the docs, we can do, um, there's like a catch-all and stuff. So handle. There's others, but we sort of have a lot of flexibility how we implement this. So I can say get slash handle index. Uh, the difference here is that now handle index needs to take an additional parameter. So this params. So this is a different router. The behavior is a little different. Uh, the nice thing about the router is slash only matches slash. Uh, and so that's like slightly different behavior. If we want to match more than this, we use star. Uh, and I kind of like that better, because uh, that's a little more explicit. You know, we do something like that. Um, and so that's kind of nice. Uh, but, you know, one or the other, whatever. 
the neat thing about params is now I can say like that and get And the way this works is it's now mapped. Um, whatever I put after this is now come out here. And normally I'd have to do like strings.split and get it manually. So this is a little cleaner. But otherwise, it's very similar to the other one. So that would return like a slice? Yeah, that would, it would be, in other words, if I went to, uh, if, I went, if I go to, uh, you know, localhost admin, admin, or uh, page is equal admin. So it's like pulled it out of the URL. That's what this is saying. Make whatever is next. And that's nice. This is not a great example, but that's nice because often we do things like, um, uh, we, this is a very common pattern for slash, uh, say you do users slash name. And suppose your username was boo. Uh, then you could get it this way. And that's a very common pattern. So instead of using question mark name equal, you can put it into the path. And that makes more restful URLs. So uh, we'll do an example later today that maybe you might want to use that pattern. Now you can do it either way. You can use server marks to do the same thing. But I'm just saying router, the HTTP router included nice support for that capability. So I'll commit this just so you can see it. But the important takeaway here was that if you use real sessions, you've got to have that clear handler. Um, any questions about that? Okay. So, 